Hello friends. This is God of Fiction how are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto awakened the power of destruction and fell in love with Rias Grimori. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. Hey, wait up Oni-sama. Two young boys were laughing and smiling as they ran through the halls of the Bale family mansion, one of many the family owned. Leading the charge was a boy with lightly tanned skin and violet eyes. His hair was spiky and black while he wore a black shirt with the Bale crest on the back. Following behind him was his younger brother who had the same skin tone as him but with bright blue eyes and a bright shade of blonde hair, almost as if the very sunlight shined from it wearing a shirt that was a literal monochrome color swap of his brothers. Though the two were twins, they had one day asked their mother which was born first and she had told them that technically Naruto was born only minutes after his brother which led to the boy calling him Onisama. Not that Saraord minded as the two were practically inseparable like most would expect of five-year-old twins, though Saraord did tend to take the lead most of the time. The two ran out of the back door to their family's large garden as a few of the servants smiled at the sight. The twins always enjoyed playing outside in the garden and were likely to be found. There whenever food wasn't being served. Without pausing Saraord released his wings and flew up to one of the treetops and sat down on a branch above Naruto while teasingly pulling an eyelid down. No fair, I can't fly that good yet. Naruto pouted down below as Saraord grinned and stayed up above him. Their mother had only just gotten them started on flying as it was a basic power all devils had through their wings. Usually kept hidden within the body. True to what Naruto had said, he couldn't fly very well yet while Saraorg on the other hand got the hang of it rather quickly. The blonde, crossed his arms and growled before kicking the base of the tree lightly in his anger. Come on Naruto, just use your wings, you gotta learn to fly anyways. His brother called out but Naruto just, hum. Feed and turned away making Saraorg roll his eyes. Naruto was always the more dramatic of the two of them and liked to make a large fuss over usually small problems. Seeing an apple hanging from a bee, ranch next to him Saraorg grinned and plucked it before tossing it at Naruto's head. The younger twin let out an, ow, and rubbed his head as he turned around and glared up at the grinning Saraorg. What's wrong little brother, why don't you come up here and get me? Saraorg teased as Naruto growled and picked up the fruit he had just been hit with. You're gonna pay for that. No I won't. Yes you will. Nope. Yes you will. No I won't. Yes you will. No I won't. Yes you will. Naruto shouted as the two went back and forth for a short while before Naruto stopped and growled will. E. Saraorg took the opportunity to pluck another apple and throw it at Naruto. The blonde covered his head and ducked hopping back up to laugh at his brother's miss before he was hit in the head by another the dark-haired Bale had thrown. Saraorg's laughter echoed out through the garden as Naruto again growled and his temper snapped. That's it, take this, he shouted as he threw the apple he held back at his brother. However something strange happened when he did. Instead of the apple flying up to hit his brother, both saw the apple get consumed by black energy with a red outline as the energy instead raced at Saraorg. The slightly older twin was shocked and fell back off the branch only a moment before the energy hit where he had just been and vaporized the leaves and branches above him. Falling down on his back Saraorg let out a gasp of breath and slight pain as Naruto rushed over to him. Itai, that hurt, he muttered as Naruto knelt next to him and helped him sit up. You okay Onisama, yeah, I'm good Naruto, he replied before both looked up at the missing part of the tree and then down at Naruto's hands as the boy held them out in awe at what he'd done. How did you do that though? He asked as Naruto stood up, Saraorg right after him. I, I don't know, he muttered before taking a step back and turning to the tree again. With another shout he punched again ho, ping to get the same result but nothing happened. Both were confused but growling lightly Naruto tried again, and again, and again, and again. And again, after around 20 tries Naruto let out a Y. L of frustration and walked over to another tree where his brother had sat down to watch while munching on one of the apples he had thrown at Naruto earlier. I don't get it, why did it happen that one time but now I can't do it? He asked as Saraorg shrugged and offered him an apple. 
The blonde sighed and took it as he sat down next to his brother and the two snacked in silence for a bit as they thought. Maybe, Saraorg began as he thought out loud. Maybe you've gotta be throwing something to make it happen. I mean, it happened when you tried to throw the apple at me. He suggested as, Naruto looked at the slightly eaten apple in his hand and shrugged. Getting back up the blonde took a few steps away and threw the fruit at the tree again. However nothing happened as it stayed a fruit and bounced weakly off the tree trunk. Saraorg frowned at how it didn't work while Naruto growled and threw his hands out in annoyance. Why can't I get it to work again? He shouted as he punched again, angry at himself and the power for not working again. However this time a small shot of the energy came out and stuck the tree, making a small hole in the side as the energy again vaporized that part of the plant. Both were shocked and looked down at Naruto's fist as he realized something. I, I was angry, first at you and then at the stupid power. He muttered, though Saraorg caught I. Tien nodded from behind him as he did notice that himself now that his brother pointed it out. Thinking on all the time wasted to figure it out and how it made him mad Naruto tried punching again, wa. Ntieng desperately for the power to activate again. And for once he wasn't disappointed as the power flew out in a slightly larger blast than his first and blew out half the tree trunk. Naruto shouted, out his happiness at finally doing it on purpose as Saraorg cheered him on. At least until both heard groaning and noticed the tree was swaying dangerously from missing half of its support. Let's get out of here. Right behind ya, Ka Chan. Two sets of voices called out getting a woman with long black hair and violet eyes to glance up from the book she was reading in the study and face the young twins as they ran up to her. Her face breaking into a smile at the sight of her sons. Though she looked only to be in her mid to late twenties at best she was actually over a hundred years old. Keeping herself looking young through a very common magic used by the normally vain devil race. Setting her book down she wrapped both boys in a hug as soon as they were close enough and pulled them up onto the couch she was relaxing on. One on either side of her. With a smile she placed pulled them back lightly and looked from face to face as they grinned back up at her. Let it be known that Miss LaBelle adored her children. What is it you two? Did something happen? She asked as they both nodded. We were running around and playing in the garden outside, Naruto started as Saraorg nodded along. When Onisama flew up a tree and started teasing me, he even threw apples at me. Here he paused to give his brother a slight glare as Misla shook her head in both amusement and slight annoyance at Saraorg teasing Naruto. Before she could reprimand him though the other son spoke up. Yeah but then Naruto threw an apple back at me but it turned into this really cool black energy and destroyed part of the tree. Like it totally vanished and stuff. He cut in getting Misla to be shocked at what he said. She turned to Naruto to see him nodding and motioned for them to continue. She knew Nate. Her of them were hurt because if they were then not only would they be showing it but she'd likely have already heard about it from a servant by now. I fell out of the tree and it kinda hurt but I'm okay. Anyways we tried getting Naruto to use the power again and it took a while but then we figured it out and now he can do it and he blew up a whole tree. New uh, I just made it fall over. Same thing. No it's not. Yes it is. No it's not, yes it is, boys, not in my ears please. Missla shouted as they started arguing right next to her. Both muttered an apology before she turned to Naruto. Naruto-chan, would you mind showing me this power you used? She asked as he pouted for a moment. I'm not in trouble, am I? He asked as she shook her head. No sweetie, I just need to see the power so I know what it is. She reassured him as he nodded and got up. The boy gained a look of focus for a second before punching towards the wall as a blast of energy came out and made a crater in the solid stone. Misla's eyes went wide before she smiled as she knew exactly what Naruto had discovered. So what is it Ka-chan? Saraorg asked from next to her as Naruto stood in front of her. T. Hat Saraorg-chan is the power of destruction, the power of the Bale clan. She told them as she raised a hand and ruffled Naruto's blonde hair. Your father will be very happy to learn you've activated it Naruto-chan. And as for you Saraorg, we can start getting you to bring it out so that you can do it too. Really? He asked as even Naruto looked happy to know that his father would be proud and that his brother would learn it. Misla just smiled at them both. How about we get started now then? Yeah, both shouted as she got up to lead them back outside and help Saraorg learn how to draw. 
it out while giving Naruto some pointers about it. While she didn't have the power due to marrying into the bale and not being born one, she knew enough about it from her husband to do this much. Idle, why she found it surprising that Naruto activated it so young and that Saraorg hadn't yet but figured he would after some help. After all, if one could do it then why couldn't the twin? So Naruto activated his power of destruction today. Did he? The lord of the Bale clan asked as he and his wife were alone in their room getting ready for bed. Misla nodded with a small smile as she thought of how happy Naruto seemed and how he was enjoying the teaching to use his newfound ability. Yes, though Saraorg Chan hasn't. After they came to me and told me what Naruto Chan did I took them outside to help them with it. Naruto Chan just seemed to soak up the lessons while Saraorg Chan couldn't activate it. I think it would just take a couple more days of training for him though, perhaps less if you could help him. Misla added as the man nodded his head. Quite, perhaps all he needs is a father's firm hand to give him the boost he needs to unlock the power. I will work with them both after Bree. A.K. fast to see how Naruto fares and help Saraorg awaken it. He promised as Misla smiled and kissed him before the two turned off their lights and went into their usual bedtime activities. All right boys, show your father what you can do. The twins grinned and nodded as Naruto ran over near the training dummy that was set up for him and with a bit of focus he called out a ball of black energy and threw it at the dummy. The wooden shape was completely vaporized after getting hit and Saraorg cheered for his brother while Naruto grinned and their father nodded his head. Good, your mother gave you the basics. I can help you refine those into true techniques and power that will destroy all of your enemies. But first, let's help your brother unlock his own power. He explained before looking down at the slightly older twin with Naruto nodding and coming over to support his brother. What followed was a day of frustration and yelling that by the end of it had their father storming off in s. Ira Org close to tears as he sat under a tree and had his knees pulled up to his chin with Naruto sitting next to him. At first their father was kind and calm as he tried to help Saraorg awaken what? He called the Bale's birthright of power, something any true Bale is capable of. However as time went on and Saraorg continued to be unable to do it the man became angrier and meaner. He hadn't hurt either of them but he started yelling at Saraorg and calling him weak compared to Naruto and a failure as a Bale if he couldn't do it. When Naruto tried to stand up for him their father would quickly tell him to be quiet and not to defend his failure of a brother. Eventually he just grew too angry to deal with it and left to take care of other matters while Saraorg had sat down and done his best not to cry for what his father said. Naruto supporting him as best he could. It would be shortly later that Misla would come out to comfort her son over what his father had said. The next couple of days were mostly the same as their father would try to get Saraorg to unlock the power of destruction only to curse him and shout at him when he failed. However it was actually worse than the first d. I as Naruto wasn't allowed to stay and help his brother, instead being given some basic training exercises on the power and then watched over by a servant to make sure he did them. This meant that saw, Iroorg had to deal with their father all alone, without the comforting support of his brother while Naruto trained to get stronger. At the end of each day though Saraorg still couldn't do it and their father stormed away from him. Angry at him and calling him a failure as a bale. Misla tried her best to comfort him but apparently that only made their father angrier as he was beginning to get unbearable. Blaming her for Saraorg's inability. It only got worse when Misla received a message from her sister-in-law Venelana Grimori talking about how her daughter of nearly the same age as her twins had managed to activate the power of destruction that day. If Saraorg thought his father was mad before, it was nothing compared to how he had become afterwards. Even the Grimori children were capable. Love using the Bale power when one of the Bale heirs wasn't, he would say. Saraorg and Misla were now being constant targets for his anger while the man would focus the rest of his attention on teaching Naruto to use his power. However the younger boy didn't like how his brother and mother were being treated and was starting to act defiant, refusing training, never leaving the room when his father told him to. Even sending small blasts of the power at things his father considered priceless. It was, all in all, making the man an absolute horror to live with. And things finally snapped a week after Venelana's message. Worthless whore. The man shouted as he slapped Miss Lahard enough to send her to the ground. Both of the boys were coming up from down the hall and froze when they heard their father shout. 
They quickly exchanged worried looks before rushing to the room just in time to see their father slap their mother again. If not for you my eldest would have the bail power. It's O-N-L. Why do you to the other having it that I haven't killed you for such a mistake? Leave her alone. Both shouted as they rushed in front of Misla and held their arms out to protect her. Misla though was W-I. Died and shouting for them to leave and go to their room, that it didn't concern them, that she didn't want them to get in the way of their father's anger. The man however growled his annoyance at his son's showing and finally let it out as he was quick to kick Saroor down next to Misla and grab Naruto by his arm and hold him up in the air. I've had it. From this moment on, the two of you are banished from this mansion. He ordered as he glared at Saroorg and Misla while holding the struggling Naruto at arm's length. He will be the sole heir to the bale now. Now leave. He shouted while. Misla held Saroorg and stared at Naruto with teary eyes as a couple servants came to take the banished pair from the mansion. No. Ka Chan. Naruto shouted as Saroorg was shouting for him in Mile. I was trying her best not to break out sobbing. The blonde cried out in pain as his father shook him, hurting him from the iron grip on his arm. Shut up. You will never see failures like them again and you will learn to obey me boy. He shouted at Naruto as the boy began crying from the pain and from how the man was separating him from his brother and mother. Stop your crying. A real bale shows no tears. Then. Then I don't wanna be a bale. Let me go. Naruto shouted as his father looked shocked at what he said before the glare returned and he slapped the boy across his face. Naruto kept C. Rying as by now the servants had grabbed Misla and Saroorg and almost had them to the door. Seeing them almost out of the room Naruto reached for them but couldn't break his father's grip. No, he s. Creamed before he channeled as much power as he could into his free hand and threw it straight at his father's face. The move was so unexpected the man didn't have time to dodge or deflect it and it exploded on contact. Naruto was dropped and landed on the ground as he clutched his throbbing arm while the servants let go of his mother and brother and instead rushed to the Bale clan head, just as Misla and Saroorg ran to Naruto. The woman instantly wrapped Naruto in a hug as Saroorg was pulled in as well while the smoke caused by Naruto's attack on his father began to clear, revealing a large burn mark going across the right side of his face and around that side of his head. The man slowly raised a hand to his face and touched the pained and ruined skin, flinching as he felt what his son had done to him before he let out a shout of rage and shoved the servants aside as he stormed forward and grabbed Naruto again, kicking Misla and Saroorg aside as he did. You insolent brat. You don't want to be a bale. Then fine. You are forever stricken from the family. You can live in exile with your worthless mother and brother. But first, you'll get the same as you've done to me. He shouted, before pulling a hand back as it became covered in black energy. Misla and Saroorg shouted as he slashed his hand across Naruto's face and the boy himself screamed in pain before blacking out, the L. Asked thing he remembered being his father throwing him across the room. K. Ka Chan. Naruto called out as he slowly started to wake up. He could feel that he was lying down with a blanket over him and D.A. pillow under his head as well as that whatever he was lying on was shaking slightly. There was also something over his cheeks but he couldn't tell what it was. Slowly the blonde opened his eyes too. See both Saroorg and Misla over him with teary eyes and smiles at seeing him okay. Before he could sit up though Misla pulled him up and hugged him tightly. Oh Naruto-chan, I was so worried you wouldn't wake up. She cried out as Naruto pushed back a little and looked around to see that they were in a very small carriage. Saroorg was sitting on one side with his mother sitting on the other, Nar. Yudo having been sleeping on the floor with both watching over him as they traveled. With a shaky hand Naruto reached up towards his cheeks but his mother was quick to grab his hands before he could maw. King him stare at her in confusion as she looked to the side sadly. Naruto-chan, what you and Saroorg chan tried to do for me was very brave, you most of all, but your father wasn't going to be stopped just by the two of you. Naruto-chan, because you hit him with the power of destruction and scarred him, he did the same to you. Those bandages on your cheeks are there to make sure they heal right. But even then you'll always have the marks on your face. She explained as tears began to form in her eyes. I'm so sorry all of this had to happen to the two of you. I never wanted anything but the best for the two of you and now this. I'm so, so sorry. She said as she began to sob lightly. 
Without a word Naruto just hugged his mother as Sarawarb switched sides so that he could hug her as well. The three of them were banished now, forced to live away from the mansion and the rest of their family. All they had was each other, and all three swore to never let anything else get in the way of that ever again. Life after that was mostly peaceful. They lived in a small cottage surrounded by grassy fields and with a small village in Bale territory a few miles away for supplies or food. Thankfully, their father hadn't been cruel enough to leave them to starve as they were able to access enough money from the Bale accounts each month to get what they would need to get by comfortably. In fact, so long as they never went near the mansion again, it seemed they would in turn never be bothered and be allowed to live happily together in that small cottage. Neither of the boys minded too much about losing the big house as they had always preferred playing outside and enjoyed the fresh air more than the building. And Miss La knew how to cook so they weren't wanting for any of the special food. S the cooks used to make since she matched them dish for dish. The only thing they could honestly they could honestly say bothered them was that they had to do their own chores now since they didn't have servants. But both quickly adapted without complaint. And for Miss La herself, she missed the happier times with her husband but overall was far happier now with her son so she looked at it as a BL. Essing and just enjoyed every day with the two of them. Sadly though there were some downsides to their situation. Word had spread that Sarahorg didn't seem to have any power, neither the Bale's famed power of destruction or any ability to use even the most basic of devil spells. In fact, the only thing that seemed to distinguish him from a human were his wings. As such, many of the local kids would try picking on him. Only for Naruto to come in and scare them off with his own power. As for Naruto himself, once the bandages were removed they saw that he had three scars across each cheek, almost like whiskers but slightly thicker. This made some of the kids try to mock him for his injury just as they mocked Sarawarg for his lack of power. It left both the boys feeling horrible most of the time because of it. Sarawarg seemed to lack any confidence while Naruto always wanted to hide his face and both wanted to stay away from the village. Their mother though gave them some advice and a push to keep their spirits up. Naruto-chan, those scars don't look bad and besides, you should be proud. You got them from defending your brother and I. If they try to mock them then you tell them that and stand with pride. You're our hero Naruto-chan so don't hide them but show them off. They're your medals of honor for protecting us. She would tell him before switching to Sarawarg. Sarawarg-chan, you shouldn't worry about not having any kind of special power. There are plenty of ways to be strong. Look at the humans as an example. Very few can use special powers like magic or the rare sacred. Gears and yet just as many become strong by other means. If they can do it then why can't a devil like you? You just give it your best and one day I promise you can be the strongest in the underworld. Both took their mother's advice to heart as Naruto stopped feeling ashamed of his scars and instead stood proud of what they meant while Sarawarg began to train as hard as he could. Taking their mother's example about humans seriously, Sarawarg began to learn martial arts of various styles from whatever teachers their mother could get them. While the number was only two, both boys did their best to learn everything they could teach. But where Sarawarg focused exclusively on training his body up, Naruto had the power of destruction to work with as well. As such, he didn't push his physical TR. Aiming as hard as his brother and would sometimes be found instead working on the power he was born with to better control and strengthen it as well. In fact, after seeing a few movies and cartoons WH. Air characters used their power in combination with martial arts, Naruto decided to do the same and began practicing using his power in tandem with his punches and kicks. And both boys quickly became stronger for it. Soon enough Sarawarg was able to fight off his tormentors without Naruto's help while Naruto had refined his control of the power to the point he didn't need to focus too hard to call it out. Ka-chan, why are we coming here? Naruto asked as the three of them were riding in a carriage towards a large mansion. Misla only told her sons that she wanted to visit someone and was BR. Inging them along but hadn't said much beyond that, making them curious as to who they were visiting. Obviously it wasn't someone from the Bale clan otherwise they'd have been turned away by now. Just be patient Naruto-chan, we're just about there, she replied with a smile, finding some amusement in how impatient the blonde child was. It had been a year since their banishment and both boys had gr. Own taller as well as somewhat more mature, 
Sarawarg began spending most of his time training as he found it exciting to strengthen himself and looked forward to fights now as he wanted to both test H. Himself and prove that he didn't need special powers to be strong. Naruto on the other hand was far more protective of his remaining family and would openly promise that he'd never let anyone hurt them. He was still very impatient though. Waiting is boring, he whined as Sarawarg chuckled lightly next to him, finding it just as amusing as their mother. Unlike Naruto, he had begun taking the small meditation sessions their instructors gave them to heart and had become very patient. Naruto on the other hand couldn't even sit still for those lessons as he would get bored. Misla mentioned that it seemed like he had infinite energy, like he always had to be on the move. It honestly made watching him wait very entertaining. Only a few minutes later the carriage finally stopped and the three got out as Misla took her children's hands and they walked up to the front door of a very large mansion, only slightly smaller than the Bale mansion they grew up in. The door was opened by a servant just as they reached it and the three were escorted to a side room where they found a table and chairs already set up for them. On the table were a few cookies that made Naruto instantly cheer and dash for. While Sarawarg grinned and chased behind him, both wanting some snacks. The Lord and Lady will be with you shortly ma'am. The servant said before bowing and leaving, Miss La thanking him and then sit. Ting at the table with her children to wait. So who are we meeting Ka Chan? Sarawarg asked as he snacked on a cookie. Naruto nodded along to the question as he had his own. Oh an old friend of mine. She also happens to be an sister-in-law as she used to be part of the Bale clan before she married Lord Grimori. Misla admitted making both boys gain wide eyes at the mention of her being ex-Bale. Seeing their looks Misla waved away their concerns. Oh don't worry, she knows all about what happened and doesn't hold it against you in the slightest. She'll absolutely love you too, I swear. She are. Eased them as they both nervously nodded when the doors opened up again. Standing up Missla turned to her in-law with a smile as she walked forward and greeted her with a hug. Venelana, it's been too long. Exactly. You need to come by more often Missla. She replied. Venelana was a woman that looked no older than her early twenties with soft, lightly tanned skin and brown hair that went down t. Over her mid back while wearing an elegant white dress. Standing next to her was a man with strikingly bright red hair and blue eyes with a small goatee of the same color wearing a fancy dark suit. Lord Grimori, it's good to see you as well. Missla curtsied as he kissed her hand with a small smile. Missla then turned to her sons and waved them over and the two both came to stand right in front of her. Placing a hand on each of their shoulders she introduced them. These are my sons, Sarawarg Chan and Naruto Chan. She said as she gave both boys a reassuring squeeze since she could feel both were somewhat tense at meeting new people. Nice to meet you, the said in unison as they both gave a bow to their hosts. Such nice mannered boys, the man commented with a smile as Venelana nodded her ag. Riemant and knelt down to look both boys in the eyes. We've heard what had happened with your father and I for one am ashamed of my old family. Know that you will always be welcome here with your mo. Her and that we won't judge you for what happened, she said as both boys were shocked before smiling and nodding as the woman smiled and stood back up. Locking eyes with Missla she saw her mouth, thank you, to her which she only nodded to. So how about a tour? Yeah, okay. The three adults chuckled at the boy's enthusiasm as they headed out, Venelana and Lord Grimori making small talk with Mile. A while occasionally pointing out something of their home like a special statue or room. Eventually they reached the garden and once the boys saw it they gasped in awe before rushing ahead to look around. The large outdoor area reminding them of their old home and happier times. So, what brought on this visit Misla? Not that we don't like the company, it's just unexpected. Venelana asked as the three sat down at a table while the boys ran around the garden. Misla frowned lightly and glanced at her sons before answering. They may not show it but they're lonely. Back at the mansion they would play together as well as with a few of the younger servants they befriended but now the children in the nearby village either stay away or try to mock them and get into fights all the time. Sarawark, Chan and Naruto Chan miss having friends and while they haven't said anything to me about it I can just tell from how they act when they think I'm not looking. I know you have a daughter only slightly. Why younger than them so I thought maybe they could be friends. 
She explained as both the Grimoires frowned slightly at hearing how they boys were treated by their peers before nodding to her idea. The Y had no problem with them so if their daughter took a liking to either of them then they could schedule more meetings later for them all to spend time together. Ka San. A young voice called out, M. Acking the adults look towards the mansion and see a young red-headed girl come running down towards them. She quickly stopped in front of the Grimori couple as she caught her breath while Miss Le looked at the girl. She had hair the same shade as Lord Grimori as well as his bright blue eyes but other than that the girl was literally an exact copy of Venelana. Ka San, could you tell Onisama to stop bugging me? He's supposed to be doing his job. The girl pouted as the three smiled, finding her expression adorable. I take it this is your daughter? Miss La asked, already positive of it in ALR, Edie thinking that her sons would likely get along with her just fine. The girl seemed to notice the extra adult finally as she blushed slightly in embarrassment for missing her as Venelana only Chuck. Led and placed her hands on her daughter's shoulders while turning her to face the bale. Yes, this is our daughter Rias. Say hello dear. The woman introduced while the now named Rias gave a curtsy and introduced herself. You have perfect timing dear, we were actually going to send a servant to get you in a moment as there are a couple people we'd like you to meet. Venelana's told her, deciding to get the children to meet now and see if they could befriend one another. Taking the hint, Misla called her sons over and the boys came quickly and stopped in front of their mother much like Rias had. Boys, I want you to meet someone. Misla told them before pointing them towards Rias. This is the Grimori heiress and your cousin Rias. She introduced as all three kids looked surprised to hear they were cousins. Really, nice to meet you Rias, I'm Naruto. The blonde introduced with a large smile. I'm Saraorg, nice to meet you. The dark-haired boy followed with a smile of his own. I'm Rias, it's a pleasure to meet you too. The girl replied as the adults smiled at the good start. Rias, why don't you show them your room and play for a while? Venelana suggested as the girl nodded and waved for the boys to follow. Oh, and I'll speak with you brother later so don't worry dear. She called out, remembering that was what the girl had come for to begin with. Rias called out her then. K.S. as she then led the two brothers into the mansion in her room. I think that went well. Now to see if it grows into anything. She commented as both her husband and Miss Lynn nodded in agreement. So this is my room. Rias told them as they reached a door with a childish sign on it that read as, Rias, room. With a small chibi drawing of her head. Opening the door showed that while the walls were. A light pink as both boys expected of a girl's room, it was also far different than they expected. There was a large queen-sized bed covered in red silk covers and plenty of stuffed animals while on on. E wall was a large TV that took up half the wall. Next to it was a shelf covered in various DVDs and then another shelf filled with lots of books. On the other side of the room was a dresser with a la. RGE mirror on it and a brush as well as a few pictures of what they saw was her with her parents and a young man with red hair and blue eyes that they assumed was the brother they had heard mention of. What do you think? Rias asked as Saraorg nodded and said it was better than their room while Naruto was looking over the shelves and the books and movies. What are these movies? And the books too, I've never heard of any of them. He asked, completely ignoring her question as he hadn't even heard it due to seeing what she watched and read. Hearing that he didn't recognize them Saraorg look, ed them over himself and had to come to the same conclusion. Me either. What's this? Gundam, about. He asked, picking a random DVD off the shelf as Rias looked wide-eyed. You mean you two don't know what anime or manga are? She asked as both boys glanced at her and in unison shook their heads. Then we've got to fix that right now. Sit down, we're going to watch a few. She told them before GR. Abbing the first DVD to the Gundam series, since that was the one Saraorg had first pointed out. Both boys just shrugged but sat down in front of the TV as she had said while she put the series on. H. Rs later when their parents would come to see them they'd find all three laughing together as they watched the show. Are you sure you want to do this? Naruto asked as he stood behind Saraorg on one side of the arena. The slightly younger twin was now 12 just like his brother and was like usual wearing an outfit that was similar in design but nearly the opposite in color. Where Saraorg wa? S wearing a dark blue and black suit meant for both style and functionality, 
able to be used as combat gear in addition to looking good, Naruto's was silver with orange highlights. The area they were in was the Bale family's personal arena meant for training as well as family disputes, which secretly happened more often than outsiders knew about. The arena itself was styled like the ancient Coloss. EUM of Rome in that it was a large open and flat area with raised walls around it and stands above to watch the fighters within. The ground though wasn't dirt or sand like said human arena but more saint. One in the entire structure was black marble. Lights were strung up at periodic points to provide maximum coverage while still keeping the arena floor itself in a slightly darker setting than the above stands. Both Naruto and Saraorg were standing on one side waiting for the match to begin as they watched their old family members take seats above to see the fight between Saraorg and the new heir. Their father's son with his favorite concubine. Only a few months before both boys had been heartbroken by their mother falling into a coma. Venelana pulled some strings with her friends in the S. Etri clan and got Missla stationed at their best hospital so they knew not to worry about her as she'd be taken care of. However it was still losing their mother and making both boys essentially have to raise themselves. The pair made sure to keep their mother in their thoughts while still doing their best to accomplish their goals, their mother's last words to them echoing in their hearts. You can do anything my sons. You just have to train as hard as you can and give it your all. So both boys had begun training harder than ever to make her proud. Saruorg surprisingly decided he wanted to be. He recognized as the strongest devil alive and become a Satan while Naruto on the other hand still hadn't decided on what he wanted for his future. He did pledge to support his brother though as the id. Aya of a devil with no powers becoming a Satan sounded amazing to him. Plus they were family and Naruto made it a point to always support his true family, meaning his brother, mother, and the Grimori family. Which he had taken a strong liking to. Don't worry Naruto, I can do this. Saruorg replied to his brother as they waited. The whole point to this fight was because Saruorg wanted to reclaim. The title of heir for himself is a first step to proving he could actually become a Satan with his training. If he could beat another devil with powers using just his strength and martial arts then with enough training he could beat anyone. When he and Naruto would spar, both would hold back to not truly hurt each other but even then Saruorg almost always won because he was stronger than Naruto T. Hanks to only focusing on his body while Naruto had to split his training between the physical and his power of destruction. They were equal in speed and while Saruorg was smarter, Naruto was unpredictable which kept things interesting. You think I could lose this? That's not it Nisama. Naruto replied, having switched from Oni to the less childish Ni shortly after their mother had fallen into her coma. It's just... This guy has been getting private training from father in how to use the power of destruction so he's got to be able to do stuff with it that I can't. I've pretty much had to teach myself since our exile but he's been learning this for years. It doesn't matter that he's two years younger than us, he's going to be a threat. The blonde explained before sighing and low, oaking up towards the other Bale members that had come to watch the match. Plus I'll bet father wants to use this as a way to kill you without anyone asking questions. We are a black mark on him after all. He added as Saruorg nodded. While the two had been left alone since their exile, they'd heard rumors that their father had lost some of his standing due to having a son with no powers and being scarred by the other. He hadn't taken any action against them as it would have been seen as cowardly but this was different. With Saruorg coming out to challenge their half-brother for the title of Ere he was now getting a chance to strike back openly, if indirectly through his younger son rather than personally himself. While Naruto knew Saruorg wouldn't be fighting to kill, only to incapacitate. Their half-brother had no such reservations and was likely under orders to be lethal. True but I think I can hold my own. Just wait up top for me and soon we'll have our status back. This way w. E'll be able to get evil pieces for peerages and achieve our goals. Saruorg declared as Naruto just grinned. You mean your goals. I'm still not sure of what I want to do yet. The older twin grinned. D back and slapped his brother on the back. Well you know the offer to work in my upcoming peerage is open. And I've told you, I'm not accepting. I'm not gonna be your servant Nisama. But come on, you'll get super strong. Saruorg tempted as Naruto rolled his eyes. And you'll get to order me around. I like being just your brother. Thank you very much. 
The blonde shot back before shaking his head with a sigh. With one last glance to the other side where their half-brother was coming out, Naruto let out his wings and flew up to the stands, sitting farther away from the rest of the Bale members as he didn't trust any of them. As he sat down, a lightly glowing barrier sprang up to keep the fighters locked into the arena and prevent any stray attacks from striking anyone in the stands. Good luck Nisama, Naruto called out as Saraorg nodded and turned his focus onto his opponent. Their half-brother looked much like their father and dressed in very fine clothes that made both twins roll their eyes lightly. The stuffy suit looked more like he'd be heading to a ball and not like he was about to fight. Either he and their father were very confident in Saraorg's loss or they had no idea what a real fight was like. Knowing their father's strength, the former was more likely. Ready, this match will determine the Bale family heir. Lethal moves are allowed and the verdict will last until a new challenge is made. So I repeat, are you both ready? Their father asked as he stepped forward from above in the stands, wearing very fine robes and looking down on both of his children with a blank look. Naruto silently noticed that the scar he had given him was gone and wondered if it was actually gone or just hidden through magic. The twins also didn't miss how he had confirmed. Naruto's suspicions that their father wanted Saraorg dead by allowing lethal moves. I'm ready. Their half-brother called with a smirk while Saraorg simply slipped into his fighting stance. I'm ready to take back what's mine. Most of the Bale family above scoffed but Naruto narrowed his eyes as he focused on the upcoming match. It would decide both of their futures. Then begin. Congratulations Saraorg. Rias cheered as the twins finished telling her what had happened the previous week. It had been a tough fight but Saraorg had prevailed and won, reclaiming the title of heir for himself. His first act as heir had been to make sure he and Naruto were welcome in the family again before demanding that they be allowed to get the evil peace set that was their right by birth. So their father had, reluctantly of course, left to set up a meeting with Ajuka Beelzebub, the system creator and one of the four Satans. The meeting was actually set for later this day but the twins wanted to visit Rias and tell her the news as well as invite her to come along for her own pieces since as the Grimori heiress she was set to get them as well and unlike them she wouldn't have to fight for the right to have them. Thanks Rias. Now, you know why we came over here. Ka Sama's cooking. The red head interrupted as Saraorg sighed while Naruto grinned. That's later Rias Chan, Naruto added, as the girl smiled and Saraorg got back on track. Are you coming with to get your own pieces or are you gonna go some other time with your family? He asked while the girl only waved a hand. Of course I'm coming with. Why wouldn't I? Besides, Kasama and Tusama are going to be busy for a while so only Onisama would be able to take me and you know how he gets. The two nodded their heads. As they had met her elder brother Sirzex a couple times before and saw that he was very devoted to Rias. It wouldn't be a bad thing if he didn't take it to extremely uncomfortable levels that surpass. Said caring and went straight into creepy. And to think he's a Satan, having the title of Lucifer. Well then let's go Rias Chan. Our ride is waiting outside and we want our pieces by tonight. The blow. ND joked as Rias stuck her tongue out and Saraorg chuckled. Together the three left and got into the carriage the Bale family had provided to take them to the home of Beelzebub, Rias having a servant notify her parents of her departure. As they rode the three talked about what they were thinking of doing with their peerage once they made them. It's also when the two boys learned about raiding game. S is while they knew about the evil pieces and peerage system, they hadn't known about the games since they were usually too busy training to have paid much attention to them. I can't believe you two are really going to get your pieces without knowing what a rating game is. Rias said as she ran a hand down her face. Well we've heard the term before a couple times but we never bothered trying to learn about them since we wanted to train ourselves to be stronger. Saraorg defended lightly as Naruto pouted. Yeah, plus the one time I asked Ka-chan about them, she said we didn't have to worry about it until we got our own peerages. She said don't worry so we just dropped it and moved on. The blonde explained while Rias sighed over dramatically with a smile. Then I guess it's up to a cult. Erd lady like myself to educate you two barbarians about the noble sport. Cultured. Since when does being an otaku count as cultured? Shish shut up. You watch just as much as me. And who got me hooked on the stuff? Quote dot 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 quote. Quote dot dot dot. So rating games. 
Sarah Ord cut in to get the conversation back on topic. Quote dot dot dot. Right. Rating games are contests of strength between two peerages. Much like chess, each evil. Peace grants the devil certain attributes such as immense speed or strength. Eventually the idea of having matches with other peerages came about and it became a sport the many did for entertainment at first and then for wealth or status. Like chess, it's very strategic but also like a real battle anything can change the results. You win by defeating the enemy king or making them surrender. There, s also many different kinds of rules to battle too, such as one involving dice and another that's more like capture the flag instead of a straight fight. As members of a high-ranking family of pure-blooded devils, we'll be expected to participate one day in a few matches so you had best gather up a strong peerage as soon as you can. Rius finished while both boys glanced at each other before grinning. So these things are for status too. Then if I do really good in them, would it help my chances of becoming a Satan? Sarahorg asked and Rius nodded. Yep, only Sama and the other Satans participa. Ted in the for a while at first before stepping back to let others while they turn to their work. But they still attend matches sometimes and will occasionally participate in an exhibition match to show they haven't lost their edge. She explained before closing her eyes in thought. Onisama actually just had a match a couple weeks ago against the new emperor. Emperor. Naruto asked as he na. Rode his eyes and thought over all the title that devil nobility had. How did anyone get the rank of emperor? I thought it just went duke, duchess and all that until you hit our family as the great king and then the satans. He asked while Rius nodded her head in agreement. You're right but emperor isn't a rank in the nobility. It's the title held by the number one in the rating game standings. The strongest competitor in the underworld. Naruto made an O oh with his mouth as he understood while Rius smiled. It was a really hard fight for Onisama apparently but he managed to come out victorious in the end. He only lost two pieces in his peerage. Wait, are these fights to the death? Sarahord cut in as the idea of a rating game suddenly didn't seem so fun anymore. No, when someone surrenders or if they get knocked out then they are teleported out of the arena and removed from the game. Deaths are possible but very, very, very rare. Hardly anyone would compete if they were lethal. She answered as she shook her head. Okay, so who's this emperor guy? Naruto asked while Rius put a finger to her chin as she tried to remember the man's name. I believe his name is. Dai. Something. Dai. Dehauser. His name is Dehauser. Belial. Dehauser Belial. Head of the Belial family. So you are Naruto Bale. Nice to meet you. After arriving at the mansion that the Beelzeb. Ub was currently staying at the three young devils were ushered into a waiting room and then told that they would see the Satan one at a time to receive their evil pieces. They were also warned that T. He would be quizzed before receiving them as it helped Ajuka decide how he tuned the pieces to each particular devil. Rius and Naruto both told Sarawar to go first since he had to win a difficult Phi. GHT to get them while Rius and Naruto had simply played a game of rock paper scissors to decide who went next. Naruto had lost so he had to wait and be the last of the three to get their pieces. What? Both Rius and Naruto found surprising is that Sarawarg didn't come back into the waiting room before Rius was called. In fact they were told he was brought to a separate waiting room to wait for them to finish. It's an honor to meet you Beelzebub Sama. The blonde said with a bow to the elder devil. Ajuka Beelzebub was a taller devil with light brown hair and gray eyes while he wore small glasses. On his face and a white lab coat over a black and red suit. Naruto knew the coat was because Ajuka was known as the greatest inventor that the underworld had ever seen, almost every technological adva. And cement that devils had in the last century was because of his work. Now, you already know I've seen your brother and the Grimori heiress so you're all that's left. I only have a couple questions for you and then I'll make your pieces for you. At times the questions may seem strange or unrelated but trust me as they are all important to my calculations so answer honestly if you want the best pieces for you. Understand, he asked as Naruto took a seat across from him and nodded. Good, then first question, what followed were 10 minutes of Ajuka asked Naruto everything from how he felt Abu. T his life to his favorite food and shoe size. By the end of it the blonde was thoroughly confused to how a few of them could matter while others made sense right away. All right, how do you see your peerage? That is to say, how will you treat them once they've joined you? Servants, slaves, 
friends, family, how will the peerage of Naruto Bale be viewed? Family, Naruto answered without hesitatio, n before looking down slightly and continuing. As you know from an earlier question and probably from asking Nisama as well, the Bale family doesn't really like us too much. Nisama doesn't have tea. He family's signature power of destruction and I freely admit I've attacked our own father just because he was hurting Ka-chan and him. I'll freely admit right now that other than Ka-sama and Nisama, I don't care about the rest of the Bale family and I'm even ashamed to be a part of it really. The rest of the family is so cruel to anyone that doesn't agree with tradition or that's different and I don't like that. That's why I only see Nisama and Ka-chan as my real family. Them and the Grimori family because they're so nice to us, even though they didn't have to be. When I make a peerage, I want it to be with people I can come to care for and love as a real family. He declared as he looked back up to see Ajuka smiling lightly as he wrote down Naruto's answer on his clipboard. A good answer. Fits very well with everything else I've learned about you so far. He commented before looking directly at him. Now the last question before you get your pieces, what is your goal in life? W. Here do you want to be say in 50 years? Or a hundred? What is your dream? He asked as Naruto frowned slightly and shook his head. I, I don't really know right now. I haven't really thought ahead that much about the future. I've just been living in the present by training, helping Nisama and having fun with Rias Chan. I want Ka Chan to get better but I don't know how I could help with that. I guess I haven't gotten a dream yet. Naruto admitted which made Ajuka raise a brow. Interesting. I'm going to be honest with you Naruto-san and tell you that you're the first devil to ever tell me that. Your brother told me his dream, Rias-san has told me hers and plenty of devil youths through the years have told me theirs as well. You were the first to say you don't have one. He told H. I am before glancing down at his clipboard. Are you sure you want that to be your answer Naruto-san? Can you think of nothing you want to do with your life? Devils are creatures of desire and grow stronger from them. What do you desire Naruto-san? Ajuka asked Naruto again to be sure. The blonde closed his eyes as he thought over his life so far and what he wanted for the future to see if he could give the Satan a better answer. As he had said, he wanted his mother to get better. However she was getting the best possible care in the underworld thanks to Venelana pulling some strings with the Citri family. He couldn't help there. He wanted to help Saraord however he could but that was true for just about all siblings. Claiming that as a dream would be pointless as it made it seem like Naruto. Was just Saraord's shadow and he did want to be known for himself. Actually there was an idea that he had thought interesting since he had heard of it. In fact, now that he thought about it he sue. LD safely say that not only would it be interesting but it would also solve the other problem he had just thought of about being Saraord's shadow. He did want to be known for himself but if all he ev. Er did was help Saraord then what was the point of staying out of his brother's peerage? Plus this seemed like something interesting that he could actually see himself doing and enjoying in the future. Thinking over everything the blondes, frown changed into a small smile as he looked up at the Satan. You know, I really want to help my brother but that's more for him and not really for me. All th. Is time I've been answering I probably came off more as Saraord's brother instead of my own person and I don't want that. I love Nisama and all but I want to be my own person. And you're right, Dev. ILS get stronger through desires so this will be my desire, I'll become the next emperor. The strongest rating game champion in devil history. He declared as Ajuka chuckled. Now that sounds like a dream. All right then Naruto-san. Let's get you your evil pieces so that you can make that dream happen. He said as he wrote down Naruto's answer and stood up. The blonde quickly followed as Ajuka told H. I am to come with him to another room where his pieces would be made. Inside Naruto was stunned to see a large machine taking up one entire wall of the room and saw Ajuka head over to one side and begin. Putting in his answers while gesturing for him to stand at the other end. Once Ajuka finished with the inputs he walked over and opened up a single panel that held a complete chess set inside. This set here will become your evil piece set once I turn the machine on. All it needs to finish it is for you to drop a bit of blood on each piece and then channel your power into them first. He explained. Got it. Naruto said as he bit his thumb and smeared a tiny amount of blood over each piece. 
Ajuka then directed his hand to a small slot under the pieces that would ensure his power was channeled. To all of them at once so the blonde stuck his hand inside and flared his power. Ajuka smiled and closed the panel as he took his hand out before hitting a single button as the machine roared to life. The panel glowed a dark purple, almost the same color as his power of destruction, before fading which made Naruto narrow his eyes in thought. It was only a couple minutes after that that the machine started to calm down and then stop entirely, a little green light turning on to let them know it was finished. Well then, here are your evil pieces Naruto-san. Ajuka said as he reopened the panel T. Oh find that the previously white chess set had become a glowing blood red. Naruto grinned as Ajuka pulled the set out and looked them each over for any faults before handing them to the blonde. Everything is in order here. You even managed to get a mutation piece. A what? Naruto asked as Ajuka smiled and grabbed one of his night pieces. Naruto noticed that while it looked like a standard night piece at first glance. Close up he noticed that it was slightly different. The normal horse head was shaped differently in that the ears of the piece stood sharply straight up and it looked as if the horse had fangs. A mutation piece is a strange abnormality compared to the regular piece of that type. This piece, while still counting as your knight, will now grant an additional boost in strength. GTH compared to a standard knight while possibly unlocking some other power in the host. It will also let you reincarnate a stronger person for the same cost as a weaker one. For example someone that might normally take around 7 pawns could be claimed with only one mutation piece. They are a very rare phenomena and very valuable as a result. He explained to Naruto as the blonde was left in awe at his luck. Ajuka then explained the different values of the pieces as well as how to reincarnate someone into his peerage with them before handing him the king piece. And this is your piece. By ta, king it into your body it will mark these pieces as yours and bind them to you and you alone. He told him as Naruto took the king and watched in fascination as he held it up to his chest where it glowed and then entered his body. He felt a small change in his power and suddenly could feel the pieces in his hands. Not just physically but mentally as well. Thank you Beelzebub Sama, Naruto said with a bow while Ajuka waved it off. You just do your best and stay true to those answers you gave me. Now I've got some other things back in my lab to get to Marie will lead you back to your family and see you out. Have fun Naruto-san, Ajuka said as he left the room and the servant that had guided them all before this came in to lead him out. Naruto looked down at his evil pieces with a grin before putting them away and following. Thinking about the peerage he would gather and his new goal. I hate this, Naruto muttered as he was dressed in a rather fine suit of dark blue with silver and gold lining. Sarawarg was wearing the same thing but had added a grey cape with a fur collar to the look since he was the heir. While he didn't say anything, Sarawarg did nod as he agreed with his brother. Neither were very happy about what they were dressing up for but politics demanded that they show up and smile as if it was a wonderful thing. It had been a few years since they had gotten their E. Vil pieces and both had gotten a peerage already, though Naruto's only had his bishops, his mutation knight, and a pawn worth five pieces. Strangely enough the queen was not the first piece Naruto had. Used and still hadn't as he claimed he hadn't found anyone worth using the power of said piece on. Most queens he saw only took advantage of one or two of the boosts they received, such as both his B. Rothers and Rias queens fighting like over glorified bishops than anything else. Naruto refused to do that and swore he would only use his queen on someone that could use all three boosts, strength, speed and magical. It left Rias wondering just how long he would put it off while Sarawarg simply said it was his choice, though other devils that heard of it would comment on it being strange and not following tradition. Naruto always did like to do things his way. About a year after getting their pieces, Rias invited them over to spend some time together but only Naruto had gone since Sarawarg. Had begun taking up his new duties as Eren was busy. What followed was really Rias just wanting a friend to vent on since she had recently learned she was going to be marrying Riser Phoenix. When s. he had first heard the news she was annoyed that her life was being decided for her but hopeful that Riser would be someone she could get along with and perhaps even love eventually. Then she met him and found him to be an obnoxious, repulsive and overbearing ass, she instantly denied the betrothal and demanded it be erased, something neither family was willing to do. So she had asked for a friend to come spend time with and help her calm down, 
something Naruto had been more than happy to do. All he could offer her though was some advice to not give up and continue trying to find a way out of it while denying it and getting stronger. Years had passed and eventually Rias and her queen, a girl her age named Akino Himahima, decided to enroll in a human school for both education and to scout out possible humans for her peerage. Naruto had stopped by on occasion to visit when he went to the human world himself, usually on his own peerage hunts around the world. It was there he ended up meeting Sona Sitri, the heiress to the Sitri family and king of her own peerage. She also happened to be one of Rhea's closest friends and rivals, which made Naruto silently marvel at how they hadn't met B. E4 considering how much he and Saraorg had visited the Grimori family over the years. But now things had come to an end. Rias had resorted to her final chance at getting out of her betrothal to Ri. Esser and challenged him to a ratings game over it. If she won then there was no marriage and neither family would have any reason to argue over it. If she lost then she'd stop fighting and marry him then and there. Sadly she lost. It was partially to be expected as Riser had participated in a few real ratings games already and only lost a couple times, and only because he surrendered to gather favor with his opponent and their family. Rias however had no experience and still didn't have a complete peerage to go up against Riser. Add in the trademark regeneration of the Phoenix family and she lost. Everyone that knew about it would admit she put up a great fight and tremendous effort, even Riser himself, but the fight had been nearly doomed from the start and it became obvious after the first 10 minutes of actual combat. And so as she agreed, Rias stopped fighting and pledged to marry Riser. The man's family had been pleased and decided to throw an engagement party both to celebrate they are pending union as well as to congratulate Riser on another victory. Being both high-class devils and close friends of Rias herself, both of the Bale twins had been invited to join the festivities. Say, Ang as they felt it was really a more somber event for their friend rather than a celebration they decided not to bring their peerage members and only came themselves. Just bear with it Naruto. We can't do anything to change it. Believe me I've tried. Saruorg admitted as they walked into the ballroom the party was being held in. This was set up as soon as Venelana Sama learned she was pregnant. She with a girl and there was no way to change it other than make myself the target for the marriage. Preferable by any stretch but it would still mean choosing Rias Chan's future which was the problem in the first place. Naruto commented as his brother nodded. Both twins loved Rias like a sister and would have been happy to do whatever they could to stop the marriage but there really was nothing. They could have done short of forcing her to marry one of them instead and they knew she wouldn't have wanted that. Rias would have wanted them to be able to find their own partners instead of tying th. themselves to her just to get her away from Riser. She would have thanked them but lived feeling guilty forever afterwards. Both of them knew it which was why they never did it. Now they were wishing they had. Hello Saraorg san Naruto-san. A voice called out to their left. The pair turned to see Sona standing to the side holding a glass with her queen Tsubaki Shinra standing behind her. Sona was a young woman Rias age with short black hair and violet eyes that were usually seen behind her circular, red-rimmed glasses. As befitting the event she was in a deep purple silk gown with a light blue transparent scarf around her shoulders. Tsubaki had long black hair and light brown eyes with her own light blue rimmed glasses on her face while she had on a black dress in the same style as her king. It's good to see the two of you again. If only under better circumstances I suppose Sona-san. Saruorg admitted as he smiled and nodded a greeting to Tsubaki. Naruto however was not so composed. Sona-chan, hey, how've you been? And hi Tsubaki-san, he added as he smiled widely at the girls. Tsubaki bowed lightly in reply to the two while Sona scoffed. Can nothing damper that irritating energy of yours Naruto-san. I had thought you would be more angered by this party than any of us considering how close you are to Rias. The girl reprimanded as Naruto instantly frowned. And I am, but what am I supposed to do about it? We couldn't find a way to free her from the marriage contract short of marrying her ourselves and that wouldn't have made her happy. And now that she's fought and lost to Riser. There's no way out that we can use period. Naruto shot back in a low voice. Believe me, I'm extremely pissed off right now but what can I do to help her? Throwing a tantrum and beating. Riser to a bloody pulp wouldn't solve anything, it'd just make things worse and you know it. 
Sona frowned as she understood his point before looking over to where three of Rhea's peerage members were standing quietly. My apologies. I didn't mean to anger you Naruto-san. It's fine. I'm just trying to keep upbeat for Rhea's chan's sake more than anything right now. She's going to need that. Naruto said as he followed Sona's eyes to see the trio by themselves. Ah, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here but I thought Rias had a couple more peerage members than that. Naruto commented on as Saro or Blue, ked over at them and narrowed his eyes as he noticed the inconstancy as well. She does, Sona admitted before pausing to take a sip of her drink. You both know about her bishop that is currently Locke. Ked away due to his uncontrollable powers, she started and both nodded, having met him once before. Well she's also obtained another bishop and a pawn worth all eight pieces. Really now, all eight, Saroorg asked as his interested was getting grabbed by the news. Saroorg enjoyed fighting strong opponents to test himself but hadn't had anyone besides his brother and teachers stand up to him in a long time. A pawn worth the full set though sounded interesting. Yes, all eight, his name is Issei Hiodo and he's a second year at Ku Academy well known for his rampant perversion and lust. T. He reason he's worth so many pieces is because of his sacred gear. Sona explained before pausing as both boys looked at her, silently asking just what sacred gear he had to be worth all of Rhea's pawns. He holds the Longinus level boosted gear, the gauntlet with the spirit of the Red Dragon Emperor sealed within it. She told them, giving a small smirk at how both of their jaws dropped at the news. One of the heavenly dragons. She got someone that's strong for her peerage. Naruto gaped while Saroorg shook his head and laughed lightly. She really does find some of the best ones doesn't she? I wonder how good he is in a fight. He mused to himself while Tsubaki took that moment to cut in. Hiodo san is not very strong at all actually. He currently is unable to fly or use even the most basic of devil spells. In fact if not for his sacred gear he wouldn't even be worth a single pawn. She explained and Sona nodded her agreement. I don't mean to belittle him but Tsubaki is correct. Hi, Auto san is rather weak and must rely entirely on his sacred gear to battle. He's unable to even do that as well as his body can't handle too much before it begins to harm him. He has no form, no skill and no ability on his own. In fact the only training he has ever done in his life was what Rias had her peerage do for the 10 days before the battle. Hiodo san has potential but is currently no. Air near it and easily the weakest member of her peerage. She added as both boys frowned. Geez, that must. To have all that power but he can't even use it. How'd he do in the match with Riser? Nar. Yuto asked while both girls sighed as they recalled just what the pawn in question had done. He first battled against three of Riser's pawns and wasn't doing very well until he used some perverted tech. HNIQUE he developed to strip them of their clothing. He then fled with Rhea's rook while her queen destroyed the area they were in to take them and one of Riser's rooks out. After which he linked up W.I. T.H. Rhea's knight and together they managed to defeat more of Riser's peerage with a single attack as he used some kind of ability to transfer the boost his sacred gear gave him to another. He finally W. Ent and challenged Riser himself but was toyed with and beat to within an inch of his life before Rhea's surrendered. Sona told them as they both thought it over. It sounded like he had all of the here. T but none of the strength to back it up, though Naruto had to keep himself from laughing at the part where he apparently stripped the pawns. That sounded hilarious. Thanks Sona Chan, San. The twins, said in unison as she nodded and excused herself to speak with other guests. Both of the boys walked around and greeted others as needed due to their status as well as saying hello to others they knew in the many guests. However both couldn't help but frown when Riser finally came out and got everyone's attention just so he could show off Rias like a prize. Something they noticed is that many w -er, e clapping and smiling as if it was fine while a small few, notably themselves and those that knew Rias and cared about her personally, hadn't even bothered to hide their frowns. Welcome everyone, R. Iser started as he raised his hands and smiled. To my engagement party. This is Rias Ramori the woman that shall be my wife. He called out, to more applause from most of the crowd. Saroorg was fr, owning while Naruto himself was gritting his teeth and trying to keep himself in check. Now if there are any that have any objections to this, let them speak now. Naruto scoffed at this as Saroorg shook his head. 
both knowing that there really wasn't any objections that would hold weight against the situation Rias was stuck in. Had they tried to object, they would have only been bringing more grief. EF to Rias as they had no standing to argue with other than their own feelings. But feelings held no part in the politics between families. That was when everyone's attention was turned to the entrance as the doors were slammed open. Walking in was a teen with brown hair wearing a red shirt under what looked like a black school jacket. The main noticeable feature he had was the large red gauntlet on his left hand. His face was set in a glare and he locked on Riser the moment he noticed him. You can't have her. Buku's virginity is mine, he shouted, much to Rias, embarrassment. Who the hell is that? Naruto muttered before Sona walked up behind them. That is Issei Hyodo, Rias Pan and the current security. Sona told them, getting Naruto to gape in shock. Him, but I can feel his power from here and it's so low. Honestly I'm only sensing power in his left arm as it is. He's the holder of the boosted gear. He demanded in shock though somewhat quietly to not draw attention to them while Sears ex Lucifer. Rias, older brother and one of the leaders of all devil kind, spoke to Issei and Riser. We were not lying when we said he currently is very weak Naruto-san. Sona reminded as Naruto nodded in disbelief. Saruorg then nudged him to get his attention back onto the boy as he had apparently come to a decision with Sears ex and Riser. It's decided then, an exhibition match for the entertainment of the guests. Sekiru T, if you win I will grant any one request that is within my power. He promised as Issei nodded and glared at Riser, the man glaring right back. The two were led away while Sirzex used his power to set up a private arena for the two to battle in before his wife and Queen Grafia teleported them both inside. What followed was a very surprising V. C-T-O-R-Y for the Sekiru T as he immediately activated the balance breaker of his boosted gear the boosted gear scale male, and fighting riser equally. Even when the armor ran out he fought on, using T. Ricks such as holy water to continue hurting the clearly superior opponent. Despite his overwhelming odds, everyone could see the heart he fought with and cheered at his victory. Grafia then teleport, ed them out as Sirzex let the arena vanish and stood in front of Issei, the boy being hugged by a tearful Rias. Well done Sekiru T, as promised. I shall grant any request that is within my power. Um, I want you to stop the engagement. Bucho should be allowed to marry who she wants to marry, not be forced into it. He asked as Sirzex smiled and nodded. Then that's your prize, he declared, getting a couple older blonde devils to frown but before they could complain Sirzex smiled apologetically. Perhaps our father was too hasty in trying to unite the Grimori and Fenex family. We... All knew from the very beginning Rias was opposed to it, but still it was attempted. I'll speak with Lord Fenex and Lord Grimori about it later. For now, why don't you take your prize and head home Sekiruti? The Lucifer said as he motioned to a griffin his wife had summoned. Issei smiled as he hopped on with Rias before Grafia had the great beast fly off. Meanwhile both Naruto and Saruorg we, re-sporting identical grins which Sona noticed. For someone with no power that was pretty damn impressive. The blonde commented, his brother nodding in agreement. It also got Rias out of her engagement too. Gotta thank the guy if I see him. Then why not go visit? Saruorg suggested, getting Naruto to widen his eyes before chuckling and nodding. I know you are going to head to the human world again soon to try and finish your peerage so why not stop and visit Rias along the way? Sounds like a plan Nisama.